Good morning. Have you ever looked outside that window and wondered what it's like down there? I have. Two years ago, I was on a flight from Beijing to Luxembourg, and I was ready for the first time to love abroad. I had great expectations. Lovely school, amazing teachers, friendly classmates, and an environment where I could learn about all these different cultures. And that's precisely how it was. My first month here was extraordinary. I was in what I would call a honeymoon phase, and I was truly convinced that I have successfully integrated myself into this new culture. But then came the second phase, the ice bucket phase. And my first bucket of ice came one day when I was sitting in the cafeteria with five other girls. And I suddenly realized that I haven't talked to them for a long time. I've even developed a I know exactly what you're talking about smile and learn to laugh at the right moment for no reason at all. So at that time, every day I went through the process of calculating my next sentence, gaining courage to say it, further hesitating, finally saying it, getting no interest, and return back to my silence again. Oh, so this is the cultural difference people are talking about. And you see, it's not about isolation or discrimination. In fact, it is barely noticeable from the outside. But at that time, I did not believe it was cultural difference. I thought there was something wrong with myself. Besides the frust frustration of realizing that I don't quite fit in, I had a deeper fear. Now, please visualize in your mind a stereotypical Chinese student. Probably looks something like this. Now, I know you're all open-minded teachers who will never hold such a stereotype. By best, most of us are aware of it and have probably used it as an evil example in some anti-stereotype lesson. So the typical traits would be hardworking nerd, um, good grades, anti-social, insportive, and probably wearing glasses. Well, guess what? I do happen to be hardworking and proud of being so. I've got pretty good grades. I'm never the best in sports. <laughs> and I wasn't that sociable in terms of conversations. So in these anti-stereotype lessons, we're told that we should never let these stereotypes define ourselves and that we should always have the courage to fight against them and to prove that we're more than that. This is very true and I firmly believed in it. Which is why, when one day, I talked about how hard I used to work back in China, and another girl in my class said, you know nothing about life. And I was really hurt. Like, that really got me. And I started to wonder if I really didn't have a life. And I feared so much to become one of these stereotypical Chinese students who only knows how to study. And I even thought, you know, maybe that's why I don't fit in. Maybe that's why I don't get along with the others. And for once or twice, I even asked my parents, you know, why was I taught to study so hard? But at the same time as I doubt and deny myself, I was in a conflict. On the one hand, I have always gained confidence and valued hard work in academics because of my upbringing and also my own passion. But on the other hand, I desperately wished to escape the stereotype and to gain acknowledgement from my peers. And there's no way that I could be both at the same time. So I had to choose which way to go. I decided first to give it a try with the life according to my peers here. So pop songs, social media, parties, I tried everything I knew, and most of them failed. But among these failures, there's this one huge success, and that was the European Youth Parliament. It is here that I discovered, for the first time, my interest in politics, debate, and public speaking. And I've even eliminated my doubts with my own social abilities. However, it was my failures that actually taught me more 
about who I am. Through my short period of intentional boycott of books, classical music, and Chinese calligraphy, I realized how much I actually enjoy those. And from the times and the guilt I used to feel always when I pretended to say, math sucks, I actually realized my love towards it. So eventually, I realized that, you know what, I do have a life. And that I didn't work hard because I was forced to, but because I wanted to, I, I love to. And it is simply part of who I am that I have to accept, whether if it's in the stereotype or outside the stereotype, whether if it's the same with everyone else or different. I have to be honest with who I am and do what I really love. Looking back, I feel my misery back then was due to self-denial because I was ashamed of and denied part of who I am in my attempt to escape and to defy the stereotype. But there's one thing that I overlooked, that these stereotypes, they're there for a reason. And sometimes they do happen to represent part of who we are. And that is a part we should never try to deny. Moving into a new environment is rather like a phase of molting. And that's the name I gave to my last phase. It is when I abandon something old and develop something new. In this process, I believe that we should all be open and try to adapt to the new environment. But in the meantime, we should always hold on to our true selves and never let go. This process, however successful, is due to be a struggle. But in the end, we find out who we truly are and we grow. Thank you.